Good, evening, uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Let me welcome you into this class, FSS 201, Social Science Statistics, Faculty of Social Science Statistics 1201, where we look at the use of the collection, the interpretation, and the analysis of data as social scientists in order to take accurate decision, even though the object of our study is human being in the society which are sometimes not unpredictable in their behavior. But be that as it may, we'll look at how can we can use data to describe phenomenon, especially as it relates to behavior of man as a social animal or as a social being. We have looked at the essence of studying this course in our previous uh, class. Now we said statistics can be divided into two broad parts. We have descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Whereby the descriptive statistics described as the name in, in, implies, it takes description of statistical description of phenomenon of event, of behavior, like when you look at political behavior of man, how does the people, or how does someone from a northern extraction behave, or why does he behave or does she behave in the way he or she is perceived, likewise in the southern part, the people as someone from the southern part of Nigeria. Now, we want to focus on descriptive statistics. One, we will be looking at frequency distribution and graph. In presenting your data as a social scientist, as someone who has gone to study social behavior of an individual or of a group and is ready to present it using statistical data, there are means or ways through which you can collect your data, if I must remind you, you can collect your data directly through observation. You can use the, your, your primary data can be collected through observation, whereby you as a researcher you go you go and observe, as the name implies, political events or, or social events, as the case may be, directly as an active uh, observer or a passive observer. You could be involved in the activity. Or you can as well administer questionnaires of different form, either structured or unstructured questionnaires to collect your data. You can go further by present by using interview, either through mail or you have one-on-one -on -one interview with your this population you are studying. While that is done, the next phase will be for you to present your data. How do you present your data? You can present your data using diagrams or charts or graph. You can use charts or diagram, what you call pictograms, to present your data, especially when you are dealing with descriptive statistical analysis. And part of the, the common graph that you use or charts that you can use to present your data is bar chart. Bar chart is made up of bars drawn at length commensurate with the with the with the frequency it has occurred on the y axis which are evenly spaced they are evenly spaced as you can see this example a b c that appeared on this level of frequency a appeared at frequency 2 so you can see the, 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 the gap between the space between each of the bars are even in bar charts. They are not clustered together. Unlike histogram, unlike histogram, whereby you can the bar charts have different types. It could be single, it can be multiple, and so on and so forth. Whereby a single bar is carrying different type of information. Is describing different type of phenomena at the same time, just a single bar. 
that's that on the histogram side of it you have the same bar but they are joined together the same type of look like as in the bar, bar chart it's, bars are also used to represent the frequency of occurrence in, the, in your descriptive uh, statistic but they are joined together they are not spaced like the bar, the bar charts Another chart that, that can be used, that is commonly used in statistical analysis, especially in descriptive statistics, is that of pie chart. A pie chart is a circular representation of variables in which the, the degrees of their occurrence are, represent the space they occupy within the circle. You know a circle is measured in 360 in degrees, which is 360. So you divide the occurrence into the into the degrees where they appear and represent it within the same circle. You can as well move further by using diagram, what we call pictograms. Pictograms you can use pictures. How many how many boys? Two boys. Or how many giants and how many midgets do you have? How many Major do you have in a distribution? These are some of the descriptive uh, ways of presenting data. Just as we did the other time, we went ahead to look at how to calculate the, the compute descriptive data using mean, median, and uh, mode. We, we Try to reiterate that we can use this this chart to describe the mean, to get the the, the, the median, which of the bar appear in the middle, and which one is the most, which one appear the highest, which one has the highest number of frequency. These are the simplest way of representing uh, what you call descriptive statistics. In social science, what are the advantages or the benefit of it, of having this idea of acquiring this knowledge? For instance, it will help you as a social scientist, as one who is who is engaged in studying social behavior of an individual or of a group, let's say a political party. You can look at it that oh, in the number in the performance of party A and B, let's say. PDP and APC, for instance, in the two recent elections, the 2019 election and 2015 election, you can, in a simple way, present their, 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 their performances in a, a chart, like a bar chart, so as to be able to take decision or advice appropriately as the need may, may, may arise. Two, it gives your sense of judgment. You can say in a very short and plain term, this is the frequency. At, in 2019, the percentage or the degree, number of seats, for instance, in the National Assembly that the APC have, you can say it was three. Why in 2015, in 2019, it is this uh, frequency. So, in our next class, we shall be going deeper into calculating mean deviation and how to use this to calculate the quarter, the range, the range, which is another statistical tool of analysis, especially when talking about descriptive statistics. Until I see you next time, remain statistically oriented.